But thank you, Virginie, for agreeing to be interviewed and to talk about mass cytometry. So for people who don't know, what is mass cytometry? So mass cytometry is a fusion of basically two experimental platforms. It's a mix of flow cytometry and elemental uh, mass spectrometry. And the current instrument is called uh, uh, cytometer by time of flight or CYTOF. Um, in contrast to conventional flow cytometry that use uh, fluorescent markers um, that are fixed to probes and where um, light emission is quantified as a proxy for molecular expression, uh, mass cytometry uses heavy metal isotopes that are tagged um, onto antibodies uh, and uh, we use the difference in their atomic mass um, to identify the different markers we look at. What is the main difference between like flow cytometry and mass cytometry? One of the problems of flow cytometry is the spectral overlap you do have between the different fluorophore that you use um, to characterize your different markers. And to circumvent that, that problem, um, we use um, metal tags that um, are really detected with high accuracy. So you can actually uh, separate tags that are different by one uh, atomic mass unit. So basically, because you reduce that, that overlap between the different channels you look at, you can go way much higher in the number of markers you look at in one experiment. So far, we can go up to 45 markers, but the machine is set up to get over 100 markers. Uh, what is a limitation so far is the availability of regions and the purity of different isotopes that are commercially available um, uh, on the market. So what's the largest um, site of panel? I think the largest site of panel is 46 markers. SATV, I think, is the only place on the continent, or Africa, that actually has a site of machine. So what are the main challenges that you experience actually being one of the first people to work with this? Yeah, so when we got the machine at SATV, that was the first machine that actually crossed um, the equator and came to the southern hemisphere. So we have the first machine on the southern hemisphere and we still have the first machine on the African continent, which poses different problems because the main uh, manufacturer um, is located in Toronto, Canada, which is really, really far from us. So when you need parts, it takes quite a long time to get them. And also because we had the first machine on that side of the world, um, obviously the company didn't have a full setup of engineers available around, so the closest engineer to help us when we had issues was in England. Uh, so we had to actually get really hands on and try to really understand well how the machine is working, um, what can be challenging, troubleshooting, we had to really become good at that to try to avoid to have uh, engineers flying um, in South Africa each time we had an issue. And when we have this type of uh, really state-of-the-art technology, um, so site of or the first site of has uh, been commercially available um, in 2009, and that was the first version of the machine that improved, and, um, and the second version of the machine was released in 2014, which that is the site of two we have in Cape Town. Um, but because it's a pretty recent technology, uh, we are not yet uh, in the most optimal conditions to run that platform. So we had to face many um, technical issues, but that's something you can do with time. And, um, and actually, the machine is working perfectly well now. But going... Um, with the development of a new platform far from the people that know how to use it has been quite a challenge. Okay. So do you receive um, samples from other parts of South Africa or Africa to run on the machine? Or do you plan on expanding eventually when it's all set up? Nice. So, so far we've been using the machine for ourselves. Yeah. We've been quite <laughs> selfish on that. But obviously one thing that is really important for us is that first the technology is more known 
uh, in Africa and that more people um, get access to it. And I think one of the problems was that people didn't know about the technology. When you have something that recent, um, uh, it's really it's really difficult to know that one it's available, and I still meet people that don't know that we have a site of in, within the institute. So that's that that's something that uh, we want to change, and uh, we have uh, groups uh, in Stellenbosch University that are working with us and our machine. So they are acquiring the samples uh, here uh, at Sadvi. And we are discussing about uh, other collaboration with people in Urban. Uh, and obviously, something that we would like to do is to open the platform for people that, that want to use it. And we're quite open for that. And um, that would be fantastic that more than five people on the African continent know how to use this type of technology. You ran a really big study on the site of, right? Yes. So how long did it actually, like, what what was the study and how long did it actually take you for you to finish from optimization to acquisition? Ah, that's a, a big thing. I, if we don't think about, like, making the machine working, that took us two years. But, like, as in all fields, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get unlucky. And we got unlucky with the first version of the machine we had. And so far that has been sorted. Um, but from optimization to the end of the study, it took us probably two years and a half. Uh, so this big study um, uh, is on adolescents that progress to TB disease, where we have two groups. Uh, the one that control the disease and never get sick, and the one that uh, during the time of follow-up, that is two years, develop the disease. We have different time points per, um, per participants, and we have 37 participants in each group, which make makes a huge number of samples, mm -hmm. And we wanted to look at the function of their, their cells, so we did an ICSSA, so we stimulated the cells in that five condition, which makes it 720 different um, tubes to acquire, yeah. which is a huge thing. Um, so before that, we did a pilot study uh, on about 30 participants. That was probably... Um, a year of development, we did the first first pilot to check that everything was working well and change some things in the protocol and did a second pilot before going into our really precious samples. So overall, I guess between analysis, first pilot, development, titration of antibodies, etc., probably three years. Okay, uh, so like you said, the machine is quite complex. And it's not really, it's expensive to start off with, so, so not many institutes will actually use it. So what do you think is the main benefit of having the site of and how can you, can we use it to actually push the field forward? I think at the end of the day, site of is probably not as, it, it's probably the same price as getting uh, a good flow cytometer. Uh, it's, when you buy it, it's a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Antibodies are, are more or less the same price, uh, and when you think about the site of experiment, what makes it like quite impressive is like the number of antibodies, etc. So the price for one site of experiment is is higher than the standard flu cytometry, but it's just because you have 45 markers mm -hmm. and not only 12 or 15. So you basically save probably in one experiment two panels that you would run in standard flow cytometry. Um, I think also people are always a bit scared about getting new technology.